Hi. Welcome to this very popular, apparently very popular talk, because there are still like, I don't know, around 20 people beside this door, so there is obviously big interest in this topic. So uh, let's welcome our speakers from Positive techno uh, Technologies. So uh, Sergei Gardejcik and Gleb Gritsai. Applause. <laughs> So thanks everybody who survived. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, SCADA Strange Love is a collective approach, it's collective product, and uh, uh, we just frontmen uh, with our team. I think uh, these guys also love applause. Uh, these guys work with us. <laughs> So uh, why are we here? Because uh, according to our information, according to our analysis, Europe uh, worst protected uh, region in the world if we uh, look uh, from SCADA security perspective. Uh, most of uh, uh, SCADA system exposed to internet have uh, well known vulnerabilities like uh, default passwords, default uh, configuration and our. Uh, Italy first uh, in this list. Why? I don't know. Maybe because it's Italy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, special thanks to Siemens Product Cert. Uh, I know uh, guys from Siemens here, and uh, thanks again because they are really professional. And uh, I was really surprised uh, surprised because we not only uh, chat with you, provide quick responses to email, but even provide patches. It's uh, something unusual in ICS industry. I will talk a lot of, uh, about Siemens. Why? Uh, because uh, Siemens is elephant. Uh, Siemens is everywhere. It's most common target during our penetration test, uh, during uh, uh, search on the internet. And uh, we not only, uh, as I said, uh, 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 chat with you, but also provide fixes. Uh, but uh, our guys, uh, also uh, working with us and I, I hope maybe next year, maybe in our conference we will talk about Wonderwire, Yokogama and uh, our vendors uh, which uh, patch in vulnerability now. So just one slide uh, about uh, what is SCADA. I don't I think everybody knows what is SCADA, but I want to compare uh, ICS system uh, with DEF CON layers. Uh, if uh, somebody gets access to ERP, it's like, I don't know, DEF CON 5. If somebody gets access to PLC, it's uh, like uh, DEF CON 1, it's like a war. Uh, so uh, SCADA is things uh, which um, make our civilization, I don't know, working. Because now uh, transportation system, uh, power system, uh, uh, everything works uh, on uh, ICS. And if ICS fails, we have something like this. Uh, if you chat in with ICS guys, uh, you uh, get, uh, can get very positive feedback. Our SCADA network fully isolated from internet. Our PLC is based on custom platform. Uh, our HMIs is something magical box and you cannot do uh, something bad with it. But uh, reality is different because 100% uh, 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 of uh, tested SCADA network are exposed uh, to internet or corporate network. Not directly, but through different application gateway, through remote access, through iPhone connected to HMI. It's a type, uh, typical situation. Uh, most of SCADA system can be hacked with Metasploit. Even with uh, 
and map because uh, uh, a lot of uh, PLCs uh, uh, rebooted uh, during uh, Connect Scan. We have free TCP connection. It's very a lot of we cannot handle it. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a real surprise for us when we start to uh, provide auditing for SCADA networks. But uh, people, operators, and engineers use uh, HMIs and engineer station to access internet. We uh, use something uh, which um, use it to manage plant to download different software, to uh, um, play flash games, uh, and so on. Uh, I don't know why, uh, because uh, iPhone have, uh, I don't know, a small screen and it's better to play on HMI, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, um, but it's true. And uh, from our point of view, ICS security level is uh, similar to internet security level in the uh, beginning of this century. Uh, and Cold Red, uh, it's uh, something like uh, uh, Stuxnet in ICS. It, uh, this thing uh, should be happened uh, to change our mind. And I think uh, what we uh, see now with uh, uh, ICS industry and security industry trying to work together to change things, it's, uh, this is good. But we uh, need, I think, 10 years, uh, 10 years to uh, see uh, big changes. So, uh, if you want to play with uh, SCADA and ICS security, uh, it's very simple because no magic on network layer, not, no magic on system layer. Uh, you can uh, use all standard stuff to penetration testing for fuzzing for find new vulnerabilities. No application security at all. So if you can uh, see HMI with a web interface, uh, you can be sure you will find a lot of vulnerabilities there. Uh, ICS guys don't care about IT and uh, IT security. Uh, they don't understand things like proxy, firewalling, uh, patches, and so on. They just uh, uh, creating uh, Business layer, we don't understand uh, what is protocol. Some, uh, sometimes you chat in with them and <coughs> uh, asking, guys, uh, this system work uh, with TCP or uh, our protocol, for example, uh, Profibus. We don't sure, maybe TCP, maybe HTTP. It's a, a typical answer, and uh, we, we don't understand that stuff. Uh, and this is a problem. And uh, now um, SCADA network uh, become more and more interconnected uh, because uh, uh, building of mass uh, networks, because connecting uh, to ERP system, because uh, of building fully connected network like uh, uh, smart grid you have uh, uh, here in Europe. So let's start from the... Uh, Network layer. Uh, nothing special on network layer now uh, because uh, Ethernet and uh, different uh, wireless communication like uh, Wi Fi uh, or uh, Zigbee become a standard to SCADA connection. Uh, so if you have uh, uh, your patch card you can easily connect if you're in security perimeter and uh, start to collect packets, start to understand uh, uh, network. Uh, there are a lot of uh, application level protocol, but uh, four uh, most widely used it. It's Modbus, uh, DNP3, uh, OPC, and the uh, seven. Uh, so, what we can do with protocol? Sniff, spoof, fingerprint, fuzzing, and so on. Uh, to sniff uh, anything, uh, not, uh, to sniff uh, anything, not a problem now. Wireshark uh, supports most of protocol. You can uh, even find for uh, Wireshark um, plugin uh, for S7 to understand this protocol. Uh, and also, you can buy something like uh, a sniffer uh, dedicated to SCADA network if you have money. If you don't have, you can write uh, your own. 
uh, spoofing injection, um, there are a lot of uh, different tools for Modbus. Uh, injection and uh, fuzzing. Uh, more tool for S7 uh, to come from us. We uh, don't release it uh, yet, sorry, but we will. Uh, but most of protocol is stateless and can be attacked by a simple packet replay. So you just get a session, a slight modify and uh, uh, started to replay it. Uh, so it's very easy to f uh, write your own <coughs> fuzzer, <coughs> uh, but um, be careful uh, because uh, guys uh, from Secrecon just released fuzzer and forget to uh, convert strings uh, to hex format and uh, fuzzer. Uh, <coughs> uh, trying to fuzz, fuzz by string, not by, by binary, and PLC don't understand what's going. Uh, about fingerprinting, uh, also nothing special here. Uh, we can use a well-known port, we can use uh, uh, protocols uh, like Modbus S7 uh, to get uh, information about product devices and so on because uh, most of uh, protocols don't require authentication to uh, provide basic information about uh, device. Modbus uh, by itself uh, does not provide any uh, kind of uh, authentication except uh, IP address. Uh, OPC, uh, very useful <coughs> uh, from a uh, hacking point of view because it's based on RPC DCOM, but uh, uh, typically it requires authentication uh, since Windows XP uh, service, uh, service Pack uh, 2. Uh, but it's not uh, a problem to find uh, uh, Windows 2000 in uh, SCADA network. Uh, <coughs> and of course, modern fingerprint addons like SNMP, HTTP, and different mention port can be used. A special release uh, for CCC. Uh, our ch uh, cheat sheet uh, for uh, Google and Showdown. Uh, you can use this cheat list to find uh, different uh, PLCs, SCADA and HMIs in, uh, in, in internet and you can be a real SCADA hacker uh, with it. Uh, uh, but uh, don't try it at home because guys from Anonymous already uh, started to use it and I'm scaring. Uh, second hour release, it's not new, but uh, it's still in uh, uh, development. Uh, development uh, are PLC scan tools. It's an open source uh, ICS device scan fingerprinting tool, which support Modbus and, 7, uh, and S7 and uh, DNP free uh, to come, uh, because now we're working with uh, Smart Grid uh, project. Uh, you can use this tool to get uh, software and hardware version, device name, uh, and uh, AWA and AWA, thanks to Dmitry Fanov, uh, who wrote it and supported it. Just a few screenshots, but uh, Gleb will demonstrate this tool um, uh, alive. One, two, three. Thank you, Sergey. Hello, Congress. I will be running demos. <laughs> well, as Sergey mentioned, uh, PLC scan is a tool for scanning PLCs. And uh, it was written by Dmitry Afanov. Uh, it's written in Python, so you can easily fix it and easily contribute to this project. Uh, it was mentioned it's open source. And for now, it supports uh, two protocols, Modbus and S7. And actually, I can find a lot of uh, freely available tools for Modbus on the internet. Uh, and our tool also supports uh, fingerprinting and uh, boot forcing of unit, uh, units on Modbus gateways. But uh, the number of uh, S7 tools uh, close to none. So this is actually what we are proud of. Um, so let's see how it works. It's very simple. Uh, this is our small lab. Not all these uh, devices are real hardware, most of them are simulations. 
And like Sergey said, uh, vendor information, uh, model, and versions. There are a lot of uh, errors there. It's still in development phase. Uh, what we actually trying to achieve uh, with this tool, besides scanning, is uh, to make an uh, easy-to-use platform for packet crafting and fuzzing. And actually, even now, uh, we have uh, 47 uh, several basic requests, and if you try to dump fuzz them, well, actually, most of the PLCs will crash now in a minute. Oh, that's all. Sergey? So we've uh, finished the net network, and now we will talk about uh, PLCs. Uh, so what's PLC? Uh, PLC is just a network device with uh, operation system, network stack, application, and own vulnerabilities. Uh, there are different uh, methods to find vulnerabilities in PLCs. Uh, uh, network scanning, fuzzing, uh, code analysis. Uh, but the uh, basic thing is uh, reversing, because uh, it's easy to download. Uh, it's hard to get. Uh, work in PLC in your lab, because it's quite expensive. Uh, but it's easy to download something from internet and uh, uh, trying to uh, understand the code. Uh, for example, um, uh, we finished our work with uh, Siemens S7 uh, 2000. It's very ba basic PLC. Uh, and the uh, firmware, uh, firmware of this PLC uh, coded in into hex format uh, and contains several blobs uh, uh, which have ARM code for b basic operation system, uh, <coughs> uh, blob for file system of PLC, and web application source code. Uh, uh, created by uh, MSWL, it's special language, very simple uh, web application coding language. Uh, there are a lot of funny stuff there. Uh, for example, uh, it's easy to find uh, certificate, hard-coded certificate, uh, uh, which is built in certificate for certification authority. Why PLC require certification authority, I don't know, uh, but it is. And also, there are a private key, a key where, so <laughs> we cannot talk about it because Siemens still fix, they don't fix it. Uh, <laughs> Fail. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, Siemens uh, issued um, notification about. Um, uh, how to uh, avoid problem with this uh, hard code certificate? Uh, don't use SSL and don't use a web interface to manage PLCs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Kada. Uh, Typically, it's a network application working uh, on top of operation system and database. Uh, so uh, it's not necessary to hack SCADA. You can hack uh, database, operation system, and so on. Uh, but uh, it's not very funny. Uh, anyway, uh, security of SCADA highly depending on uh, operation system and database security. Uh, for example, uh, for uh, kiosk mode, if HMI uh, required uh, restriction, uh, uh, restricted access to uh, user interface, uh, typically uh, operation system restriction is used. Like, uh, I don't know, group policy for Microsoft Windows uh, and our restriction. And if you can bypass it, you can can bypass uh, security of uh, SCADA. Uh, most of uh, SCADA system have very basic security features inside, like uh, password protection and uh, basic uh, access control list. But sometimes uh, these features uh, 
you know, it's like a GUI restriction. Uh, just for instance, uh, during a penetration test, uh, 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 we um, see demonstration how to uh, uh, upload new project to PLC. Uh, guy demonstrate a USB token with a chip on it, plug into uh, engineering station, uh, create code, uh, provide digital signature, and only after this can upload something. But if you scan network, you find a PLC uh, with a root tour account for SSH and FTP, and you can directly upload anything there. <laughs> Nothing special, really nothing special. Uh, about uh, database, uh, uh, we have research uh, about uh, VCC database and we will uh, publish this checklist, uh, I think, in a month or, on, or two when <coughs> some fixes will be provided. But there are a lot of interesting stuff because uh, most of information, uh, most of interesting information stored in database. And uh, if we're talking about WinCC, there are a lot of uh, bugs with, which cannot fix it easily because uh, WinCC have a uh, two-tier uh, architecture. For, uh, so uh, part of application require direct, con uh, directly con uh, direct connection to database. Uh, in this um, situation, you cannot protect database because anyway, user uh, require direct connection to database. And uh, you uh, need uh, your database uh, server provide all security features of your application. It's very hard to, uh, uh, to create such type of application, we should uh, change uh, to free tire architecture, but it's not very easy, I think. Uh, just uh, one more funny stuff about uh, hard-coded password uh, in WinCC. Uh, surprisingly, but uh, first uh, uh, this vulnerability was not set in May uh, 2005, published in April uh, 2008, abused by Stuxnet in 2010, and fixed by Siemens in November. But this vulnerability still work, uh, works always everywhere. So if you see uh, WinCC in network, uh, first uh, what you will try, it's uh, default passwords. It's, <laughs> it's just for history, yes. Uh, 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 surprisingly, this published it on Siemens forum. <laughs> About uh, database content, uh, uh, there are a lot of tables in database, uh, uh, but uh, we can separate to uh, uh, two parts. First part, uh, this uh, dynamic database with tech data, it's information about uh, uh, PLC states and so on. And the uh, second uh, part of tables, it's uh, project data in configuration, which contains information about connection to PLCs, list of users and privileges, and so on. Uh, if uh, you connect to WinCC database, uh, you can uh, uh, launch simple query to select uh, some, uh, everything from uh, users table, and you can find a lot of interesting stuff. For example, you know, administrator, <laughs> second one, you know, uh, <laughs> and if you launch your favorite debugger, you will find something interesting in memory. Ha <laughs> ha! 
so first one uh, to guess uh, Cypher uh, gets uh, exclusive T-shirt or free beer. <laughs> It's triple XOR, but uh, first three of you who say XOR will get a T-shirt. <laughs> Just catch me after speech. This is my encryption key, yeah. <laughs> so how to decrypt? <laughs> Uh, our releases, uh, it's a VCC uh, model for Metasploit, a VCC security hardening guide, and uh, exclusive Cypher 2, but we don't have yet. Uh, Clap, please. <coughs> One. Okay. Uh, this one is a post-exploitation model for the Metasploit framework that was written by Vyacheslav Yegoshin. Uh, it's still in early development phase and, uh, well, uh, so you, you can find it uh, in stock MSF, but there is somewhere a link on the slides. Uh, the obvious and the intended use of this model is to gather sensitive information during, during penetration tests or to get some data and to build your new attack vectors and to push further into the network. Uh, so let's see how it works. Let's scan the host and we can see. Yeah, we can see an, a seven port and Microsoft SQL port. Uh, as, it's, uh, as it is a post-exploitation model, we need uh, some authorized transport. And let's use uh, uh, Microsoft SQL. Assuming that we have uh, what we know uh, login, let's try to brute force it. That's actually the case, yep. Now let's use uh, our model. Uh, well, to set, to set it up, we need to enter Mm, uh, user credentials, uh, IP addresses, the usual stuff, and Metasploit. Uh, for now, uh, it is uh, the only transport that we support, uh, database. I want to actually skip this. So what we see here is a small uh, WinCC project. Uh, in wildlife, uh, you will get uh, a numerous uh, projects on one host. Uh, that contains uh, a lot of uh, users, that contains a lot of uh, password hashes that can be or cannot be instantly cracked and remember. And <laughs> a lot of uh, IP addresses of uh, PLCs, the attacks, and uh, hopefully non empty descriptions of, of this uh, of the stacks. Actually, uh, this is the information, this is all the information you need to compromise and to manipulate uh, some block uh, of some units uh, in uh, SCADA infrastructure and so on. Well, uh, for now, uh, we are supporting only WinCC, but uh, more transports uh, and uh, tier portal support is coming. And also yeah, a decryption model. <laughs> So it's about hacking, but uh, uh, for guys who work in like auditors or uh, who want to protect uh, system, uh, you can download uh, this checklist. I think you can, uh, it's uh, just released. Uh, SCADA Strange Love, okay. don't talk. Oh, everything in slides I published. It. So a, a, a lot of uh, settings, a lot of check, you can use it to harden your system, you can use it to hack uh, our system. <laughs> it's okay, hey, Weapon, uh, WinCC application. Uh, uh, there are a lot of different applications uh, in WinCC. It's a web, in, a web HMI, web navigator, it's Diac uh, agent, and so on, so on, so on. Uh, 
we uh, review code uh, of uh, application and it was very interesting reading. <laughs> Да, это про нас. Uh, so there are a lot of different applications and uh, one of uh, the DAG agent. It's a very poor rating application, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, uh, which uh, can be used to uh, manage uh, uh, registry file system uh, without authentication uh, by web interface. Uh, uh, this uh, application uh, contains a lot of vulnerabilities, path traversal, buffer overflow, and so on and so on, and Siemens decided to not use this application anymore. I think it's a right solution because uh, it's uh, hard to fix it. Uh, Web Navigator, uh, it's web-based HMI. Uh, it's uh, widely used for remote access or to offer create uh, uh, HMI um, uh, panels. Uh, during uh, a code review, we found uh, a lot of vulnerabilities uh, like uh, XPath injections to read configuration file, uh, different path, uh, path traversal to read information and so on. Uh, XSS everywhere. Uh, it was fixed uh, in update two for WinCC uh, uh, this uh, summer. Uh, XSS in HMI. Why it can be interesting? Uh, because it's can be very helpful to exploit server side vulnerabilities. Um, for example, if somebody use uh, Internet Explorer. Smiles, huh? Okay, if somebody use Internet Explorer to uh, manage power plant and to... <laughs> <laughs> and to browse his favorite uh, social network. <laughs> uh, we decided to check it. We created a client site uh, fingerprinted tool. So if you uh, visit in a site, uh, we uh, get information about plugins, ActiveX uh, inst installed on your desktop uh, and can analyze it. Uh, surprisingly, uh, a lot of uh, uh, clients from different countries, companies, and this, uh, industries visited our site, but we don't promote it. It's just, uh, I don't know, about uh, 5,000 uh, people per week. It's not, uh, and special price for guys from US, for, from chemical industry, for VCC six uh, in this year. Current version is VCC seven SP three. Uh, but we safe. Stuxnet cannot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, is uh, where any bugs in VCC? Uh, uh, we continue our work, and uh, with help of Siemens uh, and, and Siemens, with our help, sorry, guys, uh, fix it. Uh, different uh, kind of uh, vulnerabilities, like uh, very interesting uh, SQL injection over uh, SOAP, but um, we will um, provide the MSF model uh, in month or two after. Uh, deployment, uh, but um, um, most interesting from our point of view, it's ActiveX uh, abuse. Uh, Glefio demonstrated. <coughs> you can find description by this link. Uh, and more, uh, maybe, <laughs> but we don't know yet. Glefio, please. This power plant. 
No, actually, it's a small project, uh, especially, uh, especially made for this demo. Uh, we can s this is an operator uh, he's using. Uh, oh, sorry. He's using WinCC Web Navigator uh, in the browser uh, to control this circle. Like, let's call it a bulb. And then uh, he doesn't understand what's going on, and he's going to a Siemens documentation site. Let's imagine it's in the internet. That's actually how uh, Siemens site with documentation looks like, but this one contains uh, an iframe with XSS. <laughs> and now we're going to the attacker. He sees in his uh, XSS shell that uh, some user connected. And uh, now he's using uh, next uh, payload. Uh, this one payload is using a bug in ActiveX, uh, which allows us to get, let's see. Yep, user credentials and clear text. Uh, thanks to server that uh, renders uh, an object that contains these credentials. Uh, in one of the HTML properties. Oh, let's try them out if we're really. Uh, yep, they're working. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, this is scary. Uh, as you know, the payload could be much more dangerous than just this. Thank you. So, postscriptum. Uh, first time we started to work with uh, our uh, ICS system, we was inspired. Oh, we cool hackers. But uh, it's a piece of cake. It's uh, all hand in fruits. And this is scary. Thank you. personally took from this talk that Siemens does not speak Russian <laughs> because that password was published in Russian in 2005 from the screenshot so they just probably should hire somebody yes, really. yes yes but then they did not read it it was on their forum <laughs> okay we are now will be taking questions so use your chance um, I would suggest um, I would put the micro there, and I would suggest we queue just, and we will take questions from here and there. There's, there's one question from IRC, and uh, one participant wants to know, what do you think about new developments like SCADA in the cloud? <laughs> one ring. <laughs> I, I, I can't re remember uh, lots of the rings, uh, you know. It's, uh, yeah, excellent. Thank you. Okay, so we will start from my left. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, your talk scared the hell out of me. That's. Yeah. Um, do you have any idea? Um, I mean, having patches is one thing, but how is the deployment in the real world? Have do you have any ideas? Any numbers? How many skaters are patched out there? Um, uh, yes, we have a number. Uh, there are no patch management in Scatter world. 
So, uh, that is why we uh, working with uh, vendors, that is why we trying to push vendors to push customers to install patches. Because if you uh, came to uh, somebody and say, okay, we clever security guy, you have vulnerabilities, because it's working, don't touch it. Uh, if uh, vendor uh, say, okay guys, you need, uh, you need to install this and this and this to make it working. It's a different situation, but um, um, we need time. We cannot change this uh, situation in one day, one okay. year. Is there a really, uh, are the patches really applied in the real world? Or? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes uh, basic patches for operation system applied, but uh, not for application level. So the coverage is very low then. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, another question? It seems you have an exceptionally good relationship with Siemens right now. Um, how, did the rela how was your first contact with them? Were they always sort of interested in approachable or did it start out differently? Uh, just Google it, uh, just Google it contact uh, for Siemens product search and uh, uh, send a mail to free address for Siemens industry and Siemens product search and we uh, get contact in two days. So we're, we're re really responsible guys. Okay, let's exchange the microphone on okay. this. Um, when I saw the differences between the versions of the different uh, WinCC systems, I got reminded of uh, something that I actually started with when I was a really small kid. Uh, do you remember the stuff, which is actually not really fixed right now, um, when people are searching via Google in URL searches, uh, old versions of camera software and stuff like that. Um, I think it's possible to, to uh, um, find a lot of unfixed uh, SCADA software out there via Google. Um, yes. Should we probably start uh, making lists of uh, in URL searches and something like that? Yeah, but uh, it should be coordinated approach from our point of view because if we will just publish it uh, on internet, um, yeah, uh, abuses, uh, chance of abuse is very high and uh, I really appreciate the uh, work of uh, ICS cert uh, in US. Uh, who collaborate with uh, researchers, uh, with different guides, uh, and you can just uh, uh, drop a list of uh, URL of IP addresses to them and they will work with uh, industry to uh, close with vulnerabilities. Because f from, for me, for me I, I want to make world better, but uh, uh, I cannot work with uh, thousands of uh, plants uh, and so on and so on, trying to explain, guys, you need install firewall, you need filter with... They won't listen anyway. Anyway. I see a lot it, of smiling kids at home right now. Yeah, but I think uh, ty type of compliance in this case can help. If uh, government uh, will push them, we'll, we'll start to secure the installation. Yeah. Uh, hi there. I uh, just uh, want to uh, thank you for a great talk and uh, uh, just uh, one question. Because uh, as, uh, from my perspective, all those incidents are just a uh, very bad case of administration, bad segmentation from Internet. And uh, since uh, this, isn't there a correlation since uh, bad administration, that means bad passwords and bad and, and, and everything, 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 etc. And uh, in another world, uh, we have good segmentation, which you had access from internet, and there is good and perfect world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, only only way to secure a uh, current ICS system is to disconnect it from uh, everything and to install guy with the rifle behind the uh, operator. AK-47. Huh? AK-47. Well, rifle, yeah, yeah. AK-47. Well, on your choice. Yeah. <laughs> 
охранительная презентация. But by the way, what the control by 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 the Scada in Italy? Is it pizzeria, ovens, or any any glue? Um, uh, in general, Italy a very high um, industry country. Uh, we work in by and uh, we have a big deployment of um, uh, smart grid. I think it's related to smart grid because uh, a lot of sunware, yeah, uh, and you understand. And uh, but it's uh, secured uh, by in Italian way. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, if you go to Shodan, you will also find a lot of uh, industrial devices in Germany yeah, online, and a lot in Netherlands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hi. Yes. There's one more question from the chat, and um, somebody wants to know, uh, you talked about Windows 2000 in the field, so what is the worst thing you ever found on these systems like uh, admin uh, 1234 credentials or uh, similar? Uh, worst thing uh, was um, Windows 95. <laughs> And let's say that uh, he also saw uh, Windows 3.1. Uh, you know, it's a situation when uh, uh, sometimes it's free boxes on this, uh, and nobody uh, knows what, uh, this, how these boxes work because we bought it 15 years ago and we have also uh, free uh, to change. Uh, if this uh, box will fail, and they don't work, uh, don't understand how it's working. It's a typical situation uh, on uh, old uh, plants, on uh, old uh, industry. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> on old plants. Uh, so uh, you you can find it. Yeah, it's easily. Sometimes a guy who wrote it. Uh, Sorry, but he's died because he's too old. Yes. Um, please cue yourself, but uh, this time I will take your question from that side. Please, your question. Uh, okay. Um, hi. Thank you. I uh, enjoyed your talk. And um, in general, I would say uh, what uh, an engineer would like to uh, call it an easily accessible debugging tool for. Uh, and for the environment, like hackers like to talk, uh, call it an easily accessible backdoor. Uh, that's the problem here in general. But I, uh, I was wondering, did you not only try to talk to the guys, uh, to the companies, but also try to do something in terms of standardization? Because there is actually not much going on, but uh, at, especially in the, uh, in the US and at ISAR, some standardization in terms of security is going on, which is going to be uh, adopted by IEC. Um, I'm only loosely uh, in, involved in that, but uh, um, yeah, in general, did you try to, to, to um, yeah, access those people from that, especially, I, I know that also in Russia, uh, standardization uh, committees are going on in these environments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know about um, a very good project uh, in Europe related to uh, smart grid project. Uh, uh, it's uh, this project uh, focuses on standardization, on uh, security assessment, and the basic security features of ICS network. Uh, of course, US. US, uh, 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 in US a lot of work uh, done and uh, a lot of uh, investments in it. Uh, in Russia also we have um, uh, a big project uh, forced by president directly via um, Security Council uh, to create standards, to create uh, tools, uh, uh, technical and uh, organization tools uh, to secure ICA system. I, and I think uh, yeah, now uh, we need a collaborative uh, approach uh, of uh, security industry, ICS industry, government and business to change things because. Uh, um, 
uh, if uh, somebody <coughs> uh, try to, uh, to do it uh, alone, it will not work. First, thanks for the talk. And second, not a question, but just a remark concerning with Windows 2000 and maybe Windows, no, not Windows V1, but about with Windows 2000 stuff. There's a lot of companies outside, especially in the chemical and technological companies. Uh, we've got a system set up. We've got a, uh, we've got a validation and a certification, and we are, we are anxious just, just to implement just one bug fix of, of anything, just one upgrade, and we need to do all the, uh, the validation procedure again. Yes. And then you have these controlling guys, which say, oh no, it's too expensive. Yeah. Yeah, what's the problem? It's, not, it's not, not always a problem for the technicians, that we don't know what we are doing. But we are forced by the people who are just looking on the money we, are set, we have to spend today yes. or tomorrow, and not in the long run, Yes. just as an add-on. One it's more question from IRC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it responsible to uh, release exploits in SCADA systems because it is often not possible to patch systems as fast as in usual enterprise software because plants can have just a few days of downtime in years? Yes, we are very responsible. <laughs> we... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, yes, we understand that uh, patch management in SCADA network is uh, mm, not a simple task, but uh, I think uh, sometimes we need to push vendors, to push industry to change things. Uh, which is why we are releasing things uh, uh, for offensive security, uh, but also we are releasing things for defensive security, and you have choice to choose what you will use it. Uh, so, yes, it's a, it's a big problem, but, uh, you know, responsible disclosure, full disclosure, it's, um, it's working. Uh, it's better than non-disclosure, from my point of view, because non-disclosure does not work. Are there any more questions? We don't understand, we don't hear actually, even I don't hear properly. Uh, before the end, I wanted to make a short announcement. If you are. Pardon? One more question. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, how do you how do you also educate people that use those systems since once I've gotten a question how do I install new Firefox on this Windows 3 3.1 CNC machine because Internet Explorer 3 won't open Facebook this was an actual question asked how do you educate those people to you know, don't not do that stuff. Yeah, but but you know, uh, patch management, uh, software update, and so on. It's uh, not only way to fix vulnerabilities. Guy with uh, rifle, it's also way to you know uh, risk management. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, working with vendor is our approach. It's, it's a, uh, vendors and government. It's, uh, you know, it's like a hammers. Oh, thank you. There is a one short one? Short one? Uh -huh. um, I've just heard these rumors about um, nuclear power plants using wireless LAN because it's cheaper to uh, get the verification, uh, the, uh, the validation. Because if you would use a cable, you would have to validate each and every meter you put there. And if you use wireless, you'll have to do it once and it works everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, uh, it was, uh, was a joke uh, for military, uh, from military guys that uh, we have um, uh, a requirement to separate different network with uh, air gap. 
and we, uh, we use uh, wireless because yes, error gap. We have error gap. <laughs> If you are interested to play with a real PLC, I'm organizing a very small workshop tomorrow in the hall number 12 at 18 o'clock. And then the device will be standing in uh, Milliways assembly, so you can come and play and try and see how the project looks like. So if you're interested, then see you tomorrow. And now let's thank the speakers. Woo